Always on the run, huh? But marijuana addicts can move better than you. What's in that big head of yours? Brendan? You lose. Detective. You're, you're Brendan? Why? Stop moving around! Keith! Helena! We have to stop the bleeding. Let's! Richard! Help me out! S sophie Find something to tie him with. Got you. Keith? You... Helena, when we get home, let's finish our conversation. No more running. Uh, the servants and Stevie. Ten people died, all told. I'm sure glad to be alive now. Feeling glad to even have air to breathe. Listen, don't you say a word about all this. Especially not to your co-workers. If it takes money to shut your yap, I'll pay any price. Ho ho ho! Bribery! Where's that money coming from? My own pockets. Listen, you guys can distort the truth all you want, and I won't say a peep, because that's freedom of the press. But this? This is different. I've got no tolerance for people pointing and laughing at a wounded friend. Do I gotta tell you again? I'm not a gossip guy. <laughs> I hate cops, sure. But I hate gossip, too. I won't ask for money, and I won't say a peep, because I'm grateful to the guy. So quit hounding me. But, as an involved party, I've got a right to know what happened there. I just can't wrap my head around it. I talked to Brendan at dinner. Heard he got tired of the musty old castle and ran to Hollywood. Had a lot of fun in the movie biz. So what was the motive? Guy's gone silent. Sounds like he convinced you he was a goody two-shoes. But I bet you heard a different story in Hollywood. Now that's the kind of thing your lot should be writing about. Nobody knows people's past, usually. But it's easy to fool you into thinking otherwise with a little acting. And once you know somebody's past, you can lead him by the nose. He tricked you all, and tried to kill you. What a farce. Not sure of the motive yet, but he was pretty systematic about it all. Spent a ton of cash beforehand to check up on all the tour attendees. Even did a background check on me. On you? Why? Because I was going to be on that tour. No wonder I thought he knew me. The hell, so he just researched us? That's the oldest trick in the book for us. 
saying, I know all about you. It makes you superior to the other person, so you can uh, control them. Then they freak out and have to submit. He knew that tactic well. Seeing right through people without any tricks. That's what makes a real monster, ain't it? In his case, he just used money and connections to dig up people's past and played the part of a monster. But the research wasn't to select candidates, so he just picked randomly. Damn, was he just in it for fun? Now, my turn to ask questions. What you tell me is the only way I can figure out this incident. Give me anything you got. First, Brendan, or Bookie Rapper, what kind of man was he? How should I say it? I suppose he had no emotion, that's how I saw him. He said such terrifying things without a care. He hardly showed any human feelings. He really was like a monster. Keith told me he was a real jester. Jester? Absolutely not. I would have much preferred if he were at least a little silly. He was a very disturbing, terrifying man. He was totally calm as he did awful things. Richard, you seem to have a suspicion he might be Brendan. Why do you think that? When my daughter went missing, and I panicked thinking that man might have taken her, Keith told me something. This was the kind of person who would show corpses as decoration, so if he did take Sophie, he'd show off proof of it, meaning she was still safe. Luckily enough, I didn't see them, but, indeed, evidently, there were many dead bodies left around. As Keith said, my daughter hadn't fallen into his grasp. He was correct in his assumption. That made me realize something unusual about what he'd said. Keith said he saw the moment Brendan's neck snapped, and his corpse was quickly dropped into the basement. Isn't that odd? Why did he quickly put Brendan's corpse out of sight? Why did he treat him differently from the other victims? Because he didn't want you investigating it. He's got some keen insight. I'll give him that. So you suspected this was a farce plotted by Brendan? N no. Well, I just... I suggested that since Keith hadn't checked the corpse, he might still be alive. I only wanted to believe there was a chance he was alive. I had no conviction about the rest. So I didn't speak about it to Keith. I wouldn't dare risk throwing him off with my amateur opinion. Not to mention we didn't know whether his wife was safe. Apparently, Keith saw the moment Brendan's head came off, actually. Was it a doll? Right you are. Packed with neat little blood packs, it seems. Brendan was hung upside down and had his mouth taped up, and it was dark enough to be hard to tell who's who. Just dressing him up the same way made Keith assume it was him. On top of all those flashy rave lights, he dropped the corpse down below, so it was impossible to check it closer. And since Steve saw the tour conductor killed right after that, of course, he'd think Brendan was killed too. If I'd said something, maybe this could have been resolved sooner, but I was paralyzed with fear. I was only worried about my daughter. Even when Keith was running all over the place for us, Don't worry about it. Keep doing all that because he wanted to. That's all. He's deeply glad you're all safe. Now, little lady, can we hear from you too? Hear what? Anything. What you thought. What you noticed. Well, I knew he was a fake. Because I've met the real boogeyman. Sophie, stop it. Not this tale again. 
Fine, if you say so, Papa. Guess I'm not saying a word. Go ahead, please. Beating the real boogeyman sounds pretty juicy. Can you tell me more? Maybe not really met. He just touched my shoulder. But his hand was cold as ice. Right away I knew it wasn't human. That guy's hands were human, though. They had warmth, so I knew he was just a regular guy. Huh. So Boogeyman's hands are cold, eh? Uh, tell that to my little squirts. Anything else you noticed? I feel like you might get angry if I say this. I won't. Tell me. That guy had this cold and emotionless air, like you couldn't tell what he was thinking at all. It reminded me of Mr. Keith, a little. You still think that way now? Not even, because Mr. Keith got really mad at me. He was like, don't worry your papa ever again. Red paint? On his... face? It was nothing like that. It was all red from blood spurts, though. Really? Keith told me he had a weird paint on a torn paper bag. And one more thing. Did you see any red graffiti in the castle? Or any monsters? Hear any phones ringing? No, I didn't. Mr. Hoover, you're colorblind, if I recall. Maybe you just couldn't see the paint. Yeah, but it's white and pink I get mixed up. I can see red just fine. Well, uh, and you, miss? I saw quite a bit of the castle, but none of that. Did you hear that from the others? Don't get me wrong. I don't think you're lying. The others said they saw nothing, too. But then, that makes Keith the one talking nonsense. I don't think Keith is necessarily lying. What do you mean? Because people don't always see the same things you do. Thanks for the assistance, you two. Sorry about calling you in two weeks after the fact. Is not everything settled yet? The police there are in the middle of their investigation. My role is just to assist. I'm going to report your testimonies to them, and that's that. I'll be off now. Eric, take them to the entrance. When her son died, I thought my own life was over, too. I couldn't think about anything. Nothing had any taste. But tears would suddenly come anyway. I don't remember anything about what I did back then. But I do remember one thing. That Keith was always at my side. When I wailed and shouted, he'd hug me, stroke my hair, say it was okay. Eventually, I adjusted to life without her son. I found I could laugh again. But when I got my own emotions back, I realized Keith had stopped laughing. I had been broken, and so had Keith. Over time, I was able to heal, but he didn't. He was still stuck in the moment of Todd's death. 
he was always supporting me, so he never faced up to himself. I struggled to be at least a little stronger. Next time, I would protect him, since I wanted him to laugh again. But I couldn't. I... I couldn't repeat anything to Keith. And I realized I was a burden on him that would keep him from ever walking again. So, even if we're far apart, as long as he can laugh again, then that's the best choice I can make. My wife always brings me more milk before I go to bed. And last Farmer's Day, my little squirt tried cooking me a meal. I definitely don't need milk to get to sleep. And the kids cooking, I'll be blunt, it ain't good. But I'm glad for it. Usefulness and collateral don't mean a thing with this stuff. Keith didn't stay close to you expecting something in return. That's just what he wanted to do. You guys, I've got too much sympathy. You don't mind getting hurt for the sake of the other. But can't you notice that one of you being hurt hurts the other? You've just been getting more and more wounded as you go along. You're propping Keith up too, Helena. He can fight day after day, because he knows you're waiting at home. As much as I tease him about it. Don't think of yourself as baggage. Depend on him as much as you need. That's what he wants, too. Keith grabbed my hand and smiled, even though he was stabbed and wounded. And what do you say? Got you. Because he finally got what makes him happiest. But, man, too much discrepancy between your guys' testimonies and Keith's. Just how am I going to report this to their department? Hey, Helena, he went back home from the hospital today, right? Can I come talk with him now? I'm sorry. Before he goes back home, there's a place he's going to visit. And I'm planning to head there myself. I've always wanted to cry like this. I never forgot about him. Not for a single day. And ever since he died. I was scared. I felt like even the slightest sign of weakness would make it all crumble. I acted like I felt nothing, like nothing disturbed me. I thought then I might be able to fool everyone, even myself. It was so stupid. I was broken a long time ago. It was all garbage, but I acted like a champion of justice. It always felt off. Whoever I was working for, I never felt repaid. And I saw you were safe, and you
he came up to me. Finally, I felt happy again. Acting strong just made me weak. It was pointless. Todd would never forgive his father staying broken forever because I promised I'd protect his mom. I'll take off the blindfold. I'm gonna laugh, even if it's at a stupid TV show. If I'm pissed, I'll get mad. And if I'm sad, I'll cry. First, I guess they'll have to be counseling. There's something seriously wrong with my head, it seems like. It's gonna be a busy time. And it's gonna be so busy, I won't be able to do it alone. Helena, I don't think I can deal with just being a good loser. I want a chance. Let me chase after you. Let me get down on my knees. You're the only one I want waiting for me. There's no need for a chance. Didn't I tell you? Divorce. Or decide. I've decided. Haven't you too? We only ever have one umbrella, so we hold it together. And it's fine if we get a little wet, because... It'll soon be sunny again.